by the title of the video, you can probably tell where this is going, but I wanted to start this a specific way, and well, that is... It... Well, I've actually forgot the wording now. Great. Lovely. Love to do things like that, but it's obvious where things are going to go from here. I enjoyed the Karam. The Nef Neferi? Probably my favourite of the three weapons. But the Erdalak? There is just something about a whip that I like because it has a lot of range. Now, 213 damage is not like it has anywhere near what the other two have because they all have more than this, but it's the range for this thing that just topped it for me, that made this the best of the three. Which is still kind of a shame because the only way to get this is from Norma bounties that aren't available until after you complete the new war quest, which is a long way into the game. But you can pick it up for 180 platinum, you could always trade for that or whatever, but yeah, the Norma bounties. Okay, so you search for whip and it comes up with war fans. Yep, that's a bug. Out of all of the whips, it's not like this is the best anyway, because the attack speed isn't exactly amazing on this. Still think the Lysaria, well, technically the one of these that's slightly better, is also not appearing here, but never mind. They all kind of have less damage than this, making it possibly the best of all of the whips. That, and well, the money side of that aside, we'll have to find that. Because that, it does seem to do more damage, but it's more of a status-based weapon. This is more crit-based, and I'm really starting to think they are pushing the war fans just a tad bit too much. Because, obviously, the basically the best whip in the game, it's still more status-based. This thing, sadly, comes with no polarities to it, and I never finish putting polarities on. To get it over 100%, and this is why the second format, two Vs, would work way better than anything else, it's going to have to be Blood Rush. So, to be honest, in there, I think Blood Rush is going to find its way in, but not until I'm onto at least my second format with this, which is kind of a shame, but at the same time, kind of essential because that extra 40% crit chance means this thing will be over 100% crit chance. See? Even using it after the first former before I actually managed to get Blood Rush on this, it's... it doesn't look like it should do half of what it does by the numbers that you've seen previously. I mean, the total of 1,919 damage, it does seem to be the weaker of these three weapons. But, as soon as I got the second former on there and put Blood Rush in, this thing turned into a completely different beast. Because obviously once you get the whole combo multiplier up, and remember it's plus 40% crit chance stacks with combo multiplier, and it starts to hit four orange and red crits, Probably Viral and Radiation not the best of combos to have on this, but when you're doing things like Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, uh, kind of can't set it up for one fra faction, faction of enemy. Fraction of enemy. Hmm. One faction of enemy because they are a fraction of what will be up against you. Or you will be up against. God damn, I've got to learn to read properly. <laughs> but once that was on there, oh yes, much much, much better. To be fair, I was using this without Sacrificial Steel in there, and that being in there is what made the biggest difference to this. The 60-something percent crit chance it had prior was rubbish. Granted, using Amalgam Organ Shatter, you are kind of sacrificing some of the crit multiplier, but it's worth it to have that quicker wind-up for the heavy attack. Now then, on to what this weapon is all really about. The unique tactical combo that whips out a wide wave of energy with each stroke. 
unlike the pr the other ones. One shoots out an electrical wave, one shoots out a flamethrower from the top of your head. This one basically throws out grenades. They go to where you are aiming at the time, so unlike normal melee weapons where you just have to mash melee, you have to remember where you are aiming. And I have done this multiple times and not yet managed to find a limit to that combo, which not only the fact that it has a little bit more range, it is the least damaging of the three weapons, but they are so close to each other, honestly, it's not a huge difference between them. It is kind of huge. But this is definitely the, I want to say the weaker of the three, but I like the added range to it. And I more like the fact that when you get that tactical combo correct, you can shoot energy ball after energy ball after energy ball after energy ball, and you can just keep going. So if you can keep them a little bit at range, you can just keep shooting it at them and shooting it at them and these things do a lot of damage. I wish there was numbers to what damage this thing actually does. A blast radius would have been nice. There is a slam radius. A slam radius and the slam radial damage. But this isn't classed as the slam radial or the slam radius. So it makes me wonder what the perks or to this but they are just so much fun they just because you can do it over and over and over again the other two take way too long between them to kind of counter them which is why the trident is kind of low on the list don't get me wrong the Corum is a good weapon I loved it I love the electrical charge that comes out of it same goes for the Neferi, the dual-wielding fang that basically shoots flames from the end of your head. Granted, you can do that over and over and over again as well, but it just seems to be slower than the Verdalax energy ball. But they are all better than... And this is why the Corum is kind of bottom of these three weapons. The electrical wave it shoots out, the time between doing it is just way too long. The Neferi is probably quicker than this, but you are stuck in the animation of doing it while it is happening because it shoots out four and then you have to do it again. Whereas the, the Verdalac, it has the range to it. It has the range to those and you can just shoot one after the other after the other. It's not quick, but it's quick enough. We'll just put it that way. Which means the rest of the time when you're not using that, this thing still has the range and the damage to take out enemies fairly quickly and fairly efficiently. Which is just why I like this more than the other two. Granted, there is probably ways to get way more damage on this. I'm really looking for a, a Riven for this because the other two had one. This, when I, I just haven't been able to find one yet. And a ribbon on this will make it so much, so much better that, well, I'm going to use it for a lot of things going forward. It basically is just going to sit there equipped for a while because out of the three, this is the one I preferred the most because it has the, the radius for melee. It has the damage. It has the unique tactical combo thing that shoots out balls of energy, even though it says wave of energy. It's, just, it's a ball of energy. They just kind of work really well together, which is why this, out of the three weapons, is... I, I still like the dual-wielding fang, fang. Just that little bit more, but I like the range of this, and it's that which is why I'm leaving this quick thing equipped. And with that, we'll leave this off here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.